the Nigerian Governor's Forum have accepted a deregulation of the downstream sector to the tune of 385 Naira per litre. This, of course, was in a report submitted to them by a committee headed by the governor of Kaduna State, uh, Governor Nasir El Rufai. What is the impact? According to that report, subsidy costs about between 70 billion to 210 billion Naira monthly. It is, according to the committee, not sustainable. And they released a, a communique where they stated the fact that Governor El Rufai made this presentation to them. So, will Labour accept this? Will the rest of the country accept this? How? Where do we proceed from here? We speak to I. Adiji Abel, who is the head of retail investments at Chapel Hill Denim. Hi, Adiji, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what do you make of the... Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Thanks, what buddy. do you make of the Nigerian Governors Forum accepting this uh, and the pump price of 385? Yeah, I think uh, it's coming as a surprise. Uh, but I know part of what would have informed it is now that the governors are aware that the their uh, the, the their FAC allocation, what comes to them on a monthly basis, is now currently being uh, threatened. You know, based on uh, the letter written by the NMPC to the um, Auditor General in terms of the revenue uh, remit rem remittances. So I think that um, three eighty five, when you look at in terms of the percentage, is that's over two hundred percent. Uh, and I believe that uh, a total removal now may not be visible because uh, the economy is still trying, is still struggling, is still uh, trying to recover from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Inflation significantly still high, and a lot of businesses are still are still trying. So when you look at the, the direct impact, energy cost, a lot of um, Nigerians still provide power for themselves using generators, and it means that it means your cost of fueling your car will also double. Cost of transportation would increase significantly. So you can see the impact that it will have direct impact on inflation on goods and services. So I feel that what uh, what we think is it should be faced. Uh, the best time that would have been done then uh, when prices were low. Uh, but we've seen a lot of back and forth in terms of a full deregulation of the of the sector, and uh, Nigerians' the prices would have increased gradually. So we would have seen an upward movement, downward movement, and would adjust and not feel the impact. So sometimes when we delay things and we want to implement at once, the impact is always very significant, and it's only just short. So even for businesses that have already uh, done their projection, you see. Those are a lot of shocks that comes in because it will impact on the cost of uh, inputs. Thank you so much for that, Ayo DG. Um, there's been a suggestion of buses, 113 buses to cushion uh, the impact. Um, I guess, what do you may have to ask you? <laughs> what, what do you make of that? And then, you know, we've talked here, even on the morning show, about the savings from subsidy being passed directly to people to, to cushion them. So I guess those two cushioning options, I want to ask what, what your take is. Okay, I think uh, the the issue of 133 buses, that's just like uh, scratching the, the surface when you look at the impact. So we are projected that if a subsidy um, is not removed, that we would spend about 1.6 trillion this year on subsidy. So I feel that it should be in a document, you know, like we have the, uh, the economic sustainability plan. So this subsidy, this is what we want to use it for. But um, the issue of the, the buses, I don't think um, that's, uh, that can um, really scale through because I even 133 buses, even Lagos alone, we have more than 133 one, uh, BRT buses. So I, I believe that what should be done, 1.6 trillion that is being the savings for subsidy, this is, these are the projects that would be impactful that we want to use them for. You know, like, it's always very, if there's transparency, then people will also not complain. You see, like, the Sukuk uh, bond, most time when they raise funds and you are traveling, you can see exactly what they have used it for. You can easily trace the, the use of those proceeds. So they can design a program and say, this is savings. So you are working on, maybe the, um, we're working on one or two, traveling on one or two roads, and you can see savings from subsidy savings from subsidy. I think 
even for Nigerians over time, they will, they will, that will, one, improve uh, transparency. Secondly, provide that uh, confidence that actually this fund is being used judiciously. So I think um, it's maybe it's because they are just taking that, um, that um, decision, rather, uh, I feel that there still needs to be a, a, a further sit down on how this will be structured. But I, but I also, I know because there's been a lot of discussion around it, there may be an internal document that, um, that has like a strategy on what they, they will use those savings for. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, you'd mentioned, you know, the need to sit down and, and, and structure this out. What kind of resistance do you expect from Labour, who is, you know, obviously currently occupied with Kaduna right now? Yeah, I think uh, we, we, it's predictable. We know the stance of labor. Most times, mostly wages and um, fuel uh, prices increase. So I believe that uh, they would resist it because it's also not very practicable from 165 to 3, um, 365. It's really not visible, or 353 rather. It's really not visible uh, currently, given the current challenges because this would impact across almost uh, most uh, Nigerians because every even those that are the lower hand also consume and cost of goods would, would increase. So I believe that uh, labor should be on, um, um, uh, they should also look at some of the policies, how they can persuade governments to implement some policies that will also impact across. So it's not mostly when um, we have issues of wages and fuel prices. And when we see that, you know, like they're talking about the refinery, these are things that we can box and, and ensure that government, if you don't fix this uh, refinery within the next one, two years, this is what would happen. And we begin to give them warnings. And we know that this is like a medium to long term um, and probably give us a, a lot of relief in the future. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, refineries because I want to ask you about the pace of this whole matter of deregulation. I mean, the refineries, as you just said, you know, medium to long term, you're looking at what the Portaco refinery, they're saying, what, 18 to 23 or 24 months uh, for in phases for its rehabilitation. So, you know, if Labour is saying that deregulation can't happen until the refineries are completely rehabilitated, Ayo, how do we handle paying subsidy for 18 to 23 months while just Portaco alone is being revamped? Yeah, I think uh, this is a, a very a tough call for both um, the government and also for labor. Uh, they would, and that was why I mentioned it may be a gradual removal. Uh, because for government, if you look at the current budget, imagine um, they're marking taking 1.3 trillion for uh, that out of the revenue for subsidy. That would be very, it, it means that it, they may not, there may be nothing left for capital expenditure. So I, I, I believe that. The government can also, we have the downtown refinery that is also, we expect within the next one year to what can, can they have a sit down with uh, Dangote and see, can it be faced and there will be a gradual production that can just be used for internal consumption. I'm just, I'm just thinking, but I, I believe that the, the removal, uh, the total removal now is really not possible. so getting the refinery working within the next 18 months, uh, there, it's also not visible. That's the Portaco refinery may not be visible. Uh, so it, and it's not sustainable for government to continue to also, the, the reality is for them to continue to bear that subsidy. It's also not um, sustainable. So there need to be a, a middle ground. There need to be a more um, strategic approach to this and face, and uh, we can see um, the face in terms of the faces of how this will be implemented over time. Ayo Deji Abel, Head of Retail Investments at Chapel Hill Denham, thank you so much for taking us through this uh, major headline on the Nigerian Always Governors Forum, uh, accepting deregulation. We'll see how things play out. Thank you, Ayo.